Hey, good morning, everybody. Surprise! We have a person of interest coming to the show today. Kathy! Hey! Kathy. Hey, everybody. <laughs> How I've you been doing? gone for a month or so. We I'm were glad, missing you. Yeah, I'm glad to be back, everyone. Just so you guys know, I'm moving to uh, Las Cruces. We're setting up a uh, in, an in-home live streaming studio so oh. that we will be very professional. And that will be the, uh, I'm leaving the September 7th. And so it's going to be a whole new, whole new realm for everyone at the Dog Connection show. So I'm sure it's going to end up being worth it, you guys. So everyone's been very helpful in doing the show while I'm gone. So Welcome we got back. a great show today. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank okay. you, humans, you humans out there. Today we're going to be training you, right? Yes. Okay. So what's the topic? Well, the topic is a uh, language, a uh, sign that dog try to something said to you using body language or maybe some verbal expression and we don't catch it. We don't understand what the dog is trying to say to us or we misinterpret that. And we have a little chart to uh, illustrate and guide us in our conversation and if you don't mind, I'll share that with you right now, if I can retrieve it. Uh, where is the chart? I have the chart 30 seconds ago. Ah, here it is. Voila. Boom. Voila. Voila the oh, chart. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's good. It's a very common chart that's out there. Um, pretty much capture most of the signals. There are a lot of signals. I counted about... 64 individual signals and then they're combined in more complex conversations but the basics ones are here thank you for sharing that it's pretty good so of course here we have a boston terrier uh, and we see the alertness and we see he's suspicious so we see also if you look closer at the at the leg position so alert is not just ears up and not just looking forward you see the dog has a square stance he's confident he's standing in his space you know now suspicious is the back legs which is the propulsion the front legs is a steering wheel and the head is a little bit taller try to go ahead of the body making sure the body is safe so i would say this is more a displacement behavior it's it's nothing to do with aggression right now the dog is suspicious try to figure out with with that situation so he's flirting with the problem mm -hmm. then he has different options freeze fight or flight so in that case is anxious the dog goes into a freeze response and so he makes himself really small to be out of the field however using big eyes imitates the puppies being young i have no clue i'm not, I'm not uh, yeah, please help me right um um i miss the um, what no no um the one who designed the mickey mouse uh walt disney walt disney actually used that anxious behavior to mm -hmm. show an innocence right in his cartoons that's correct it's, it's, so then we have a threatening behavior again threatening doesn't mean he is um sorry threatened behavior is not an aggressive behavior is a fear response so he's mm -hmm. talking and communicating try for diff different reasons to express himself through barking stay away of my property i'm intimidated by your appearance i don't know what's going to happen next i bark at you because i want you to know how i feel these are all expressions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that will be definitely still um if um freeze response the dog is frozen in space he cannot move so actually he's being threatened over his space now the mm -hmm. dog the next one says angry yeah yeah he, he's frustrated and so in that point he has one option left is to go towards it or the situation before mm -hmm. the situation affects him mm -hmm. okay so, so there's some lunging in that yeah there's a lunging forward so we have like already a, a, an, an attack or um um flight uh, sorry a fight response so he's ready to fight <laughs> over this right. one now peace 
I would not call it peace. It's definitely a displacement behavior. It's avoidant behavior. The dog turned away from it. So he doesn't want to deal with it. Or mm -hmm. the dog wants to tell him, I don't mind your business. I mind my own business. I'm looking around here. It's kind of like with kids who says, we're not friends anymore. Yeah. Exactly <laughs> the same picture, right? Or, or when you're telling them, don't beg, and they look the other way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So then we have stressed behavior, the yawning. So yawning is stressed, but also it can show you to calm down. It could be a situation where the dog is showing a behavior, not because how he feels, it's because how you feel. So we have mm -hmm. a mirror effect. Okay. So yawn yourself down kind of thing. When we can see this uh, happening after we uh, a period of playing? Um, well, the stress behavior could be a body stress, temperature, mm -hmm. um, overheated, okay. lack of um, water. It, it, it's a problem showing the dog has a problem with it. Okay. Um, so depending on how the tongue is, if the tongue is like a shovel, right. the dog is dehydrated. If mm -hmm. the tongue goes up and down, the dog is overheated. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. if, if the tongue is kind of short, the dog is stressed with a meaning of emotional stress, okay. not physical stress. Okay. Now, and of course, one, sometimes they, they automatically yawn. I'm sorry, Roman. Sometimes yeah, they, yeah. they it's a real yawn. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, yeah, yawning. I saw the tongue. Right, sorry. Um, so the stress leaking is not always stress leaking. It's usually a, a communication problem. I have a lack of understanding what you're trying to tell me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do next. I'm mm -hmm. confused about your situation. So if you ask a doctor to sit and he's leaking his lip, it's not because he's stressed. He's about, he's not really clearing fine what's going on here. He doesn't yeah. understand you, the sequence of your commands. Mm -hmm. Is it stressed? Yeah, but not to that extent where we talk, my dog is stressed. He doesn't like playing with me. That's not, it's just a lack of communication. It's kind of like saying, what? And he's, when he's uh, putting his tongues on his nose like that, is that also to stimulate sense, uh, sensory? Yeah, uh, it, it could be a sensory overload. The dog is clearing his nose. Kind mm -hmm. of the, the, the action is clearing my nose to perceive information. Yeah, okay. okay? It's kind of like clearing <laughs> your probe. Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting here thinking maybe it's because he's got boogers. <laughs> <laughs> um, and okay. that's a hanky. That's a hanky right? that's a yeah, that's, a, that's our national <laughs> catty right there. <laughs> Didn't happen in the past three weeks, things like that. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, okay. Well, that's fine. Welcome back. We have yeah. fun. Hey, if we don't have fun during the show, yeah. why are we doing exactly. the show? That's right. Yeah. Well, see, this is for people to be learning. So I'm learning, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I figured yeah. that if maybe he's got a booger. Let's look. <laughs> okay. You're, you're right on that. If the dog has something in his nose, like a foxtail. Yeah. Will be that and lip leaking. Yeah, right. Uh, no leaking. Okay, so yeah, you're right. Okay. Back at you. <laughs> um, sniffing on the floor. Not always peace. It also announces I'm minding my business. Option number one: I'm minding my business because I'm looking for a good spot to pee and poop. <laughs> yeah. So it depends on this on the situation. Mm -hmm. Minding my business if what's happening in front of me feel threatened towards it towards me so i'm kind of my, my business don't worry about it i'm just looking my stuff here okay it also shows how the other ones feels like to him it's not just the dog who shows these signals but the problem is is usually the other side yeah however we have to see how the dog feels about the situation so if we are very intense and you'll see people who start yanking on the leash because the dog is going down with his nose and they yank even more on the leash because they, they want to move on. The dog is showing displacement behavior for two factors, A, for the handler and B, for the environmental triggers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and don't forget that dogs, when they sniff the ground, they're also good vacuum cleaners. You drop a cookie or you got crumbs and they're yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. So I, ha I have a lead is also an option. So this, this can be general communication. Hey guys, I got a lead. The other one is I mind my business. And the other one is I'm looking for a spot. Yeah. yeah. Now the term respect in that picture, I feel is not accurate. So the look is look, the dog is looking away, lifting his leg. It's a displacement behavior. The dog says, I am stuck in my place. I have nowhere to go. I don't want to interact with you. 
-hmm. that is what the dog would do in a crate that would what the dog would do in a corner respect okay. not really i'm not accusing the person that's his opinion i'm, I'm just saying no. from my experience it's no. not the case there's a break of communication between the dog and humans around yeah them. yeah and, oh, yeah. and as Varen explains, see, I see this in this post. He says most people don't pay attention to their pets. People need That's to Dale. be more alert. Absolutely, you just nailed it. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you, Dale. There's more. Yeah, relaxed. If 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 you know your dog, what I would say, learn the signals of your dog. Take a treat. Show your dog a treat. Observe what's happening. That is a happy event. Okay. Okay. Now yeah. show something your dog does like a vacuum cleaner. Observe what the body language, what the posture is like. So give it time. It's kind of like going out for a date with your partner, your friend. What do you want? You want to get more information about how your behavior is, right? So you mm -hmm. get a better feedback to land a good chance, right? Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. do that with your dog. Go out flirting with your dog. See what he got to. Mm -hmm. So stress release, right? Spot on. The dog shakes it off. What the dog does basically is it moves his fascia tissue and everything temporary stored as of a trauma perspective is being released through that shaking off. Mm -hmm. We do that too. We says, ah, oh, oh, I'm going to shake myself off a little bit, right? Yeah. Now. Ooh, that was hot. Yeah. We, we do that unconsciously, but dogs do that consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good way. If you yell at your dog, if something happens, a loud horn, a door smashed, a thunder storm goes on, the dog will shake it off. Dogs who don't, they have a stuck trauma that needs treatment. Mm -hmm. um, stressed, itching. Well, stressed itching could be allergies, could be you know food allergies, could be environmental allergies, could be allergies about your friend who just moved over and you don't like him and it's like, oh, I'm allergic about that friend. Can you not come in in my house, please? I don't like it. Um, stalking. Yep. That's a terrier thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, like a herding dog too. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, good, good, good observed. Um, herding breeds, uh, kettle dogs, mm -hmm. border collies, uh, Pyrenees, not so much, but this is a classic stalking. I intend to be up your grill, right? Yeah. We, you, you, know, better they, they, you better listen to me. <laughs> but if you, if you do that behavior to a dog, you tell him I'm stalking you by asking him questions. What are you doing today? Yeah. What's it's the matter, about, baby? Exactly. So, <laughs> and people, the dogs who are stressed and in pain, sitting in the corner trying to avoid things, and they're like, oh, baby, what's going on with you? Yeah. We yeah. send the wrong oh, message, and then we wonder why wrong. the dog is attacking us, right? Perfect. I like the blue eyes. Is this David Bowie? Yeah, right. <laughs> blue and brown, yeah. Need space. The dog is likely in a safe place. No kids going there. No people going mm -hmm. there. If the dog doesn't go out of his on his own or being lured out of there, I would not approach. Uh, give space. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> respect. Yeah, not really. I say this is totally displacement behavior. The dog doesn't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, happens very often who people, the dog is in the crate, people want to open the door and want the dog to come out and the dog turns it around and looks in the back wall. That's a place like, talk to my back if you want. Mm -hmm. um, right? Yeah, I, I was going to say in another time when you see that a lot is in a shelter when a dog is scared and they go right into the corner and they face the wall. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you're right. It's not a respect thing. It's a... Right. Um, if a dog goes in a corner, it's suspicious. I would definitely involve the vet because it could be a neurological issue mm -hmm. from to cancer. So don't ignore that. If your dog is likely to go in a corner facing the wall, it's an alarming signal. If you observe it very often throughout the day, call your vet, make an appointment. Usually, however, it's about the dog doesn't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> kind <of> yeah, right. <laughs> um, yeah. Friendly, polite, curved body, not really. A curved body is not a balance. It's kind of like, hi, friends, how you guys doing? It's wrong. It's not mm -hmm. friendly. It's insecure. Polite, no, I would say more insecure attachment, structure, problems. He's not sure how to approach it. 
uh, if a mother comes home, the puppy wants to gather, you know, food. It's kind of like, oh, mom, I'm the best one here. How about I get first the food? I would not encourage that. I would like the dog to be solid, standing on the four feet, like, hi, I'm here. I am who I am. Who are you kind of thing? Are we friends or not? Mm -hmm. uh, so curved body is always misalignment from the energetic perspective. You want yeah. the dog to be straight. Yeah. Friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, blue and brown eyes. I love it. <laughs> David Bowie friendly. <laughs> um, I see a greens in it in that picture. I would say not f good intentions, but I'm kind of stressed. I don't really want to know talk about it, but mm -hmm. people say the dog is smiling. No, it's a stress behavior. Pretty please. Yeah, we know that face. We love Kathy, that right? face. Yeah. We love that face. Oh, what about me? Pretty Don't please, I get I'm going to die and spin on you like on your watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, belly rubs. Wow, love those. Uh, I know some people may not disagree, may disagree with me. Um, I would, you know, check it out yourself. Like, read up on that a little bit. There's really scientific evidences about what I'm claiming here. Um, so pretty please, great. Uh, Walt Disney totally captured that in all his movies, mm -hmm. the innocent, pretty please yeah. thing. Um, I don't like begging me personally because it comes out for insecurity. I definitely give the dog another job instead. And when he's there on a job, that will be a rewarded. Yeah. I'm a point. love bug. Yes and no. Like, let's watch that a little bit because many people get bit through that. Mm -hmm. I'm a love bug. Your personal dog who lived with you for ages does that. Of course, it's a love bug. Hey, you know, you know exactly my sweet points, right? If that is a stranger dog, don't touch this. Because that could be a say submissive behavior to avoid an interaction. And if the dog is trapped on his back and you're not paying respect to what the dog needs, he may end up turning around and snap at you because you touched him. Mm -hmm. The other thing is usually you see it associated with urination, belly up and urinating, especially for young dogs. This is a trauma response, meaning is the dog is so afraid of you that he's giving up his life for you to stop that doing. Mm -hmm. I would not encourage that to my dog. I would rather have walk away from it. Make a step backward, let the dog turn back up and then reward the dog for doing so. And then let the dog come to you on his own free will. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. Right? Excellent points. Roman. What else do we have? Well, we have these guy here. Okay. I like, um, can we start from the other side? Because that would be an extension. Yeah. Perfect, I think. So that greeting stretch, I would say, I just woke up. I'm not sure what's going on here. Number one. Number two, I have ulcers and I stretch my belly to get rid of my ulcers. So if your dog does it very often and is not good with his food, check medical attention, make sure your dog doesn't have any intestinal problems. Sometimes the food, I have one chihuahua here. She got into medication in the very beginning. Um, and She got into meds in the very beginning and she had the damage on her belly. That's what she does all the time, especially around food. Jumping on you is a stress behavior, is an anxiety. Yes, we love it because it's nice, but I jump up on you because I need to come to your face because I need you. It's, I would say it's a natural behavior. Um, I would not correct it. I would replace it with an alternative behavior instead because we know if it's a small dog, it serves fine, right? Like your dog, Kathy. But mm -hmm. if I have a great den and he does it to me, his head will yes. be above my head and his paws will be in my face. And you mm -hmm. know, a 150 pound dog doing that is a puppy and he learns that to do that forever. It's not funny. Mm -hmm. So it's not really, I love you. It's an insecure behavior. I would disencourage it and have him showing an alternative behavior if I love you. How mm -hmm. about I sit and I love you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so replace that behavior. Don't punish it because it comes eventually with good intentions. Like I want more of you, mm -hmm. but do not punish. I see people kicking the dog with their knees, like putting the knees up, spray bottles, shake your hands. It's a no-no. I'm friendly. Play ball. Great subject. Even trainers misinterpret that. Oh, my dog should have play ball, so he's good to play with. Well, there are three stages of that. A, I want to invite you to play. 
And so the other dog has to respond with the feedback. The second option is the dog is ignoring him and he's like, hey, how about I invite you to a play and it's up to you to come and play with me. And the third one is showing a play ball as destruction, distracting the dog for doing something worse than what he does. Like in a play group and you guys who do the filming in play group sometimes, Mm -hmm. Go and see when two guys are very tense walking each other, one dog will come up into the play ball yeah. and he says, hey, how about you guys play with me instead of getting in a fight? So watch that. It's not always inviting. The same with tail wagging. Mm -hmm. Tail wagging doesn't mean always friendly. It mm -hmm. could be I'm very happy doing my job to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right>. yeah. <laughs> and look and out, I'm going to lunge. <laughs> now, that ready play, play ball, um, it's a play ball. Is I'm inviting to play sets the rules, I would definitely not encourage the dog to go in OCD situation, compulsive behaviors, but I would introduce him a couple of actions in between to make sure that it's not about the ball, but it's about the interaction with you. It's kind of like a two party game. Mm -hmm. I play with you if you play with me. I throw to you if you do an obedience task. Mm -hmm. Okay, because sometimes we cause the dog's anxiety by playing those games where the dog is constantly in prey drive, constantly in prey drive, as it com it's that explains correctly here, prey bow. Okay, but we, we cause the dog anxiety and it's not what we want. Now, sitting, we, what part is missing so far? I haven't seen it anywhere. Sitting is I am patient. I am patient to interact with food, interaction with game, patience. Laying down is to the next level. I am patient, but still waiting for the opportunity. Now, if the dog lays on the side, like one leg underneath, oh, yeah, good. More, there are yeah. more of those. Yeah, yeah. Good. When the dog sits on his back, but laying on the side, that's totally relaxed. But you can see on the face, on the ears, you know, the way they're playing. Mm -hmm. Curious? Yeah, that's perfectly. Whistle with your dog. You see that happening, especially shepherds yeah. with their ears, flappy ears. That's mm -hmm. gorgeous. Happy or hot? Definitely hot, definitely stressed, happy. I don't know how he, the person came up with that idea. It's not happy at all. Quink, quink, twinched eyes, not happy. Is it a in behavior? Panting like that is overheated. So yeah. it's stress behavior. Mm -hmm. Wiggle butts, yeah. Who has a box who haven't seen a wiggle butt, right? I like wiggle butts. It's also part of, you know, getting used to their bodies. Um, it's totally over emotional, like dramatic emotional. Oh my God. Oh my God. Kind of thing. Mm. I wouldn't encourage it, but I know it's funny. I, I, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a prima donna. Yeah. Right. Um, scratching. Yeah. So it's a reflex behavior, scratching and it's, it's comforting from our side. It's a feedback of what we do. My dog loves being scratched on the back. My dog actually goes on the back and he wraps his back. Sometimes you can see if the dog likes it and you have the feeling that you are a healer and, and you're good with energy. Keep your hand instead there. See if your dog pushes against your hands. That yeah, means he needs, that. he needs some yeah. energy work there. Yeah. So feel free to do it. Step into your healing power. Hold your hand. See what the dog does. Usually you see an elder dog would push his back legs there like, yeah, mm -hmm. all that feels good. Yep. No problem. Scratchy butt and licking. It's a displacement behavior. Um, I would say likely you're dealing with a with an allergy or you know any any things that's itchy. I would definitely check on food and check with your vet on that part if you see that particular behavior, like lip licking and sitting there scratching. Mm -hmm. Do we have more of that? I think we're done. We yeah, did. but I ha I have one more behavior that uh, people should understand or should try and understand, Roman. Yeah. Zoomies. Great. I love that zoomy thing. Yeah. What, is, what are zoomies? Yeah. Question to the audience. Do you know what, what zoomies time, What time are usually the zoomies? <laughs> yeah. Point number one. What happens before the zoomies? What happens after the zoomies? How long do they last? Yeah. And then go back and look at your dog as a predatory animal. Mm -hmm. And what time of that day predators go out for hunting? Okay. 
No, do you encourage the dog to feel like he has to hunt in your house? Or you want to play that game and say, hey, how about that particular time? I take my dog out for a walk, come back mm -hmm. in and have lunch or dinner. Sorry, mm -hmm. lunch, dinner, obviously, right? Um, another reason why zoomies can happen is because the dog has overcompensated stress. Mm -hmm. And he breaks out as soon as that time comes in, he over explodes. Now, red direction is a good option. Red directing, punishing, zip collars, prong collars, and all this, etc., will cause long-term damage. I would not encourage you to do that. I would rather take the dog out to work it out outside, not inside. You can play tug of war, play kind of predatory games, chase me, chase you, make that a safe place to go. In the house, in their slippery fall, you're likely looking at um, an injury coming up mm -hmm. soon, okay? Especially for younger dogs and for elder dogs, um, towing an ACL or something or jumping off the couches and mm -hmm. running on the walls. So I would not encourage people to do that inside the house. I would call inside the house kind of a sacred place. Yeah. Nothing happens in the house, everything outdoors. But I know some people don't have that option. Um, make sure your dog has proper runouts and proper traction on the floor if you have a dog and you don't have any carpets and there is very slippery yeah get one of those rubber yeah. glove shoes yeah. where your dog really has a good traction and doesn't hit the walls and through the sheet rock <laughs> yeah i used to have a dog that that did zoom me so much and and i wanted him to go outside and i finally got him to go outside but inside it was up on the couch up on the chairs fall over the back of the couch and and you think oh my god he got hurt you know but not really but no 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 let's this is that's like rough housing inside not acceptable right, right. yeah um, warren says every time hero does something wrong he knows he was bad and he will hide and do a peekaboo <laughs> Um, <laughs> Warren, let's talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> call me. Yeah. <laughs> wow, uh, that was absolutely. We have a. I have a short video. I would like yeah. you. It, it's few minutes, uh, two or three minutes, and we are running almost out of time. But let's play this video, and hopefully, I will get it right the right time. The right video. And I think this is Doug. Uh, hopefully so, this by one. the way, if you want to be the best parent in your neighborhood, don't share this video. No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I don't think I have the right video. Uh, anyway, let's try this one. I know what this one is. It can be a good one to comment. Mm -hmm. Simple. Ah. Simple. 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 Sit, 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 sit. Shake it off. You see so many, everything that we talked so far. Yeah. Okay. The dog is walking around, sniffing on the floor. He sits, jumping on, displacement, licking his lips, jumping on the person, hugging the person, totally stressed. He's a very confident dog, mm -hmm. but he has no clue what he's talking about. Right. So, and it's all about the ball. He wants the ball. Unfortunately, the kid doesn't want to do. And he's over talking to the dog. Sit, 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 sit. And the dog has no clue about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Thanks, Dale. It's common. <clears throat> This is very common. I see this mm -hmm. when, I, when I go to clients or we do online sessions. I see these people struggling. Sit, 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 and come, come, come. I says, how many times do you talk to people to take place on your table? Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, yeah. sit down. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like if your dog doesn't get it with the first round, meaning is there something wrong? How about you explain your dog what you want? Show him based on his behavior what you want him to do and then reward it. Like, mm -hmm. all you have to do is offer that treat and wait for the dog to offer a behavior. And if he does it, give it a name. That's right. Mm -hmm. So the well, dog you know, knows what he's doing. <clears throat> Wouldn't you say, you guys, that it's really more the, the humans that need to be trained as mm -hmm. opposed to the dogs? The dogs will learn very quickly, and they have their own behavior that we need to know what they're trying to say to us. We expect them to know what we're doing, so why not give them the same respect that they give us? So this was an excellent show. You I, gave some I agree. Yeah. I agree. Thank we, you. We have, uh, we have a short last, last word before you yeah. close me out. Yep. 
we need to remember we are at least 40,000 years with dogs. Mm -hmm. Dogs do behave as we do because it's already captured in their body memory. Mm -hmm. We just have to open up our mind that they behave like babies, like young children, the right. same behaviors. Yeah. Right. Right. It, and 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 it's it's. Uh, it, I think the last thing I want to say is it bothers me so much when I see somebody that gets a dog that is clueless about what their responsibility is. Mm -hmm. Not only do they take the responsibility of bathing and clo and and uh, feeding and uh, getting exercise for the dog, but they have to take responsibility for the emotional and spiritual components of these dogs. Yeah. If they don't do that, they're going to have a crap dog. And yep. it's not the dog's fault. It's the person's fault. And what I observe is sometimes the human um, pretend to know how mm -hmm. to handle the dog. And that gives, I, I witnessed two or three scenes where the handler uh, was very, very aggressive with the dog with kicking and pushing. Oh. But when you talk oh. with them, they know everything about dogs and they have dogs all their life and they know how dogs behave and bang here and bang there that's a very very sad situation because yeah. they don't they don't get the language of the dog they don't get the communication with the dog right i'm driving picking. i'm driving since i'm 16. does yeah. make me a car mechanic well, yeah, you know, exactly. the, the thing the thing that we like, folks, that we love about Roman is that there are a lot of dog trainers out there. And the dog trainers are going to train your dog to sit and give paw and roll over and all that. That's not where Roman comes from. His his approach is a spiritual approach where you're connecting with your dog. Honey, mommy's on the show. Thank you. <laughs> Like, are you talking uh, about this guy again? <laughs> well, that, he was, he was, that's his in the background. I said Roman, and he goes, Oh, I love Roman. <laughs> Uh, but what you do is you 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 deal on the on the heart level with the dog. You you connect on a, I want to say a spiritual level, but yes, you do that on a spiritual level because you look at the body language, you look at what the dog might be feeling, and you try to understand. And then you're successful at understanding because the dog reacts mm -hmm. to how you treat the dog. Yeah. That is so much better than I don't care if my dog gives paw. Who cares if my dog respects me and comes and and we can live co cohesively in an environment together where we're both happy comfortable and not under stress what a great relationship so that's the we, kudos to you roman for always giving Thank our you. our um our audience the insight of what the human should be doing i, I well, really feel supported here i want to share it with you because it's very difficult to to go through a, through a, through a, let's say a, 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 a desert of bad information there is mm -hmm. nowhere to hide you go in there whatever you step you step on misinformation misleading guided information yeah. all mm -hmm. of a sudden the last 60 years we totally disconnected from animals that will live for 40,000 years mm -hmm. plus 40,000 scientifically yeah. proven i'm referring to scientific evidence here and we, we have to see the emotional aspect, the emotional relationship between humans and dogs and animals mm -hmm. in general. We're coming right. from a dark age of relationships here. Yeah. Yeah, and so, understand that they're a gift. They've been given to us for a reason. We so have the responsibility yeah. to share that. On these word of wisdom, uh, mm -hmm. we have to close the show. We're a little bit tight on the time, but thank you, Roman. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Keep thank smiling. You, keep, okay. Keep bringing your see positive. You next week. Thank I'm you. I'm glad to be back. Bye. Bye. -bye.